welcome to the Untrapped Podcast, where we give motivational and inspirational tips about life, small business, wisdom, health, wealth, finance, relationships. It's about being the best you that you can possibly be. Possibly be, 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 be. Hashtag Untrapped. Welcome, well, welcome to the Untrapped Podcast. 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 I am your host, Keith Kelfus. What's up? This is Keith Kelfus, and we're going to be learning about why branding is so important for your small business. So there's a common theme, a centralized uh, marketing message that your customers can learn about, but it's not from me. It's from Ryan Kettering, who's going to be coming on live in a second here and sharing some awesome uh, knowledge and insights. He's the founder of Prolific Prints, and he's well known all throughout our industry amongst pressure washers, landscapers, window cleaners, and uh, we're going to be interviewing him because I've been learning a lot of stuff from this dude. Like, I'm on a learning journey myself, learning so much from, uh, here, he's coming on right now. What's up, Ryan Kettering? What's going on? Yeah, man. Are you doing good? Yeah, yeah. You? Awesome, dude. I'm out doing my Saturday quotes, and uh, it's pretty cool. I pulled over, and, and I've been looking forward to hopping on with you on Facebook here. And you, you have a, a wealth of knowledge and information. And you're the founder of Prolific Prints, so you create uh, uh, designs and, and uh Banners, postcards, media, business cards, company rebranding packages, all that type of stuff. I know a lot of people know you, and I met you at the, uh, I think, the huge convention before. But anyways, I, dude, teach us about branding and why it's so important and start off. What, well, what is branding, dude? Yeah, well, I mean, so for the definition for branding, for me, the, the simplest way that I've ever heard, which I, I love it and you know, genius is, is, is simplicity. It's when you can say nothing more than you have to say without taking anything more than you have to take away. And um, Jeff Bezos has a quote, I'm, you may have heard it, but uh, branding is what your customers say about you when you're not around, right? So it's, it's when pe- people come to us or, or talk about building a brand or come to us and say, hey, I want to build up my brand. And, um, you know, you can work on your branding, but ultimately it's not something that we can 100% control because it's actually the perceived value from your customer based on what that is. So even for you and I as a personal brand, um, as you know, we want people to have a certain vision about who we are. And sometimes that shapes, or all the time, that shapes how we try to portray ourselves. But if somebody meets us in person and we're having a bad day and we give off a bad vibe, the very first time we meet them, that first impression becomes the brand that we are to them, right? Um, oh, so one of the results of branding is the perceived value. You're creating a perceived value? Right. Okay. So when we work on our branding, we're working on that outward uh, display of image, act how we how people look at us as what are, what are your values? What are you, um, you know, all these, basically everything that we do say, uh, anything that's outward from our company, every single touch point. Um, here's another definition of branding. Your brand is the sum of all touch points added together with your customer and how they perceive those things. So basically, um, what branding does, the biggest part about uh, branding that can help you as you go along with a customer is as you continue to deliver on small promises and commitments to customers. That first one of them, I call you, you pick up the phone. Boom. That's a promise that we, when we say call us now, today, live to answer your call, and nobody answers the phone, you've just broken a promise with the customer. Why would they do business with you, right? So as you hit these small little wins with the customer, and that's just in the beginning, but as you go along years with the customer, you build up this what we call a brand bank, right? Meaning that if you, if I meet you for, for lunch um, and I meet you one time and I'm just 
Real quick, YouTube. I guess, can you come a little bit closer? Someone says yeah. there's a bit of noise and feedback. I, I hope, is it, is it better now? I'm not, I, I thought it maybe was, do you have a window open or something? No. I don't, okay. Well, I don't hear it anymore, so. I was, I was hearing that too. I'm not sure what that was. Um, is it but, maybe better now? So, I can, yeah, it's good for me. I was, I was hearing it too. I thought it was a little bit of wind. Um, but so if, if we go to lunch and the very first time we go to lunch, um, I'm just, just treat you very rudely. And, uh, just, it's just an awful experience for you. Are you ever going to go to lunch with me again? Probably not. Right. Um, but if we've known each other for years and you know who I am as a person and, and, and I act in a very negative way and you're used to me being a completely different person, you're going to say, hey, are you doing okay today? Are, are you feeling all right? You seem a little upset. And you're going to let that one time slide, right? If you've known somebody, you know, somebody that you have known for years, if they have a bad day and they don't act themselves, you let it go, right? But if they continue to do that the second time, would you still let it go? Probably, right? You're actually going to let that bad behavior go on for quite a bit of time because they've built up this brand bank with you uh, where you know that that's not who their character, their brand is. That's what happens for our customers. That's why it's so important to get things right along the way is that basically branding gives off a perceived value that allows us to get the best customers, the best qualified customers. It'll pay us more and more often, but also it gives us the benefit of the doubt when we mess up because they know that's not who we are and they give us the opportunity to fix our mistakes. If you deal with a customer who's not giving you an opportunity to fix a mistake, it's because you haven't probably built up enough in your brand bank with them. And that can happen early on with a customer, you know? So our company directly tries to help people with our products, building their visual brand, but branding as a whole is a much more, more than that. And so our, the content that, that we create, we try to help people to sort of build the overall brand, which is really any touch point. It's, how you look, how you smell, how you answer the phone, um, you know, how your online presence is, all these things, every touch point. Wait, did you say how you smell? Think about it. When you walk by a Cinnabon or, or a, um, you know, what's the other one? Auntie Anne's. <laughs> Cinnabon. They, 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 Auntie Anne's, they, they have their, their, their restaurants in like the longest hallways so that it can carry that smell all the way down the thing so that that becomes their brand you start to trigger when you when you you know smell that you think of like you, you can already taste it in your mouth and you want it right well the exact opposite happens if you smell like you know awful every time somebody comes that's going to stink smell <laughs> and people are where you smell like booze or whatever people are going to that's going to put negative uh light on you right booze? now normally in our business uh, you know in the service business we're not <laughs> We're not going to necessarily have such a amazing positive smell that like, oh, you should hire that guy. He smells really good. But, um, you know, but the, but it can work against you. Right. So um, being aware of those things, I think, is definitely good because, I mean, at the base level, it's chopping up so bad. Can you say that again? So basically, I brought home a box of uh, a bunch of cologne. And I was like, I don't know, because her her friend worked at a cologne store. They're throwing it away. So I had this idea, like cleaning jobs, and you spray on some good cologne, you're going to smell good to the customers. And they're like, I like this guy. And then now it's a new company policy. Everybody has to wear Curve cologne. Okay, let me bring them back. Did you get cut off? So yeah, so it's basically that perceived value and, and you can work on it, but it's, but it's understanding that it's not in your control that I think that's like the first step because then you start to watch your, your actions more. And, you know, that's what, when somebody posts like some of the, some of the things that people comment back to people, to customers on Facebook and on text message and email that they post up on in these groups, I, I can't believe that you would say that to somebody. And I don't even think they realize that it hurts their brand uh, to their other peers. But, you know, if that's how you treat people, your customers, like just because somebody can't afford you, you're going to treat them like crap. That doesn't make any like that's 
you know, and maybe that's not a qualified customer for you. But if, if that's your brand, you're going to start finding that your qualified customers are deciding you're not qualified to be their cleaner. You know what I mean? Dude, you're teaching me a lot right now. I'm being humbled. I have, a, I call it a healthy anger, anger where you like, you do so much stuff for low prices for so long. You kind of get this, uh, you know, this thing. Yeah. So uh, a brand, like a common theme, it's not, it's not, it's not you anymore. It's, it's a brand. All right, more well, good stuff, you know, man. I like when you I talk. Think, <laughs> I think most, most people, like we said earlier about ourselves, we have a, a, a idea of the perception of what, how we want to portray ourselves as a, as a person, as a human being to other human beings. Um, you know, we, we don't, we don't want to, you know, you could be an all around great person, but if every day you go into a coffee shop and you're grumpy because you're just like not a morning person and, uh, and you're kind of just grumpy that time, everyone in that coffee shop is going to think you're a horrible person, even if you're not to the rest of the world. But, you know, so generally, mm -hmm. so, so we can even sometimes do things that are outside of what we typically would want to do. Um, but aside from your personal brand, then with your business brand, you know, I think also business owners have an idea in their head of what do I want people to perceive my company as, you know, um, they think, well, you know, we're the, the best cleaners. We, um, we have the best equipment and we have the best customer service. So we should be able to charge top dollar and everyone should want to use us. That's the idea that's in your head, but branding is about bringing that idea in your head and making other people believe the exact same thing. Um, you know, and so a lot of times if people, you know, the first question in people's minds is we want to charge more um, and they want to charge highest dollar and, and, and get the best customers is, do you look the part? Do you fit that part? Does your brand fit that? You see, if a guy rolling up in, you know, beat up pickup truck, um, you know, that, that is answering his phone on the job and fumbling around with everything and doesn't, you know, that person should be getting exactly what they get paid, if not less, probably, right? Um, now, the person that you go on their website and everything looks, you can see customer testimonials to, to give 30 third party validation you can see a picture of the owner so you kind of have a little bit more comfort and trust there you can see their vehicles are nice and lettered up and they get to your house and everything is just in sync you 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 have this idea of that that, that company has created about the experience that you're going to have and everything flows with that you see all we have to do is create the experience we want people to have tell them exactly how that's going to go and then just deliver on those promises and then as you deliver 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 people are comfortable you know it's not about i think people think about like branding and wowing people like i have to come up with something that's so amazing that'll blow them off their feet when you get in the house no you don't it's not about you could do that i suppose but really it's more about just telling people exactly how it's going to go and just actually do that because that's very rare you know what i mean dude i'm learning a lot from you right now screw all these guys watching just keep talking <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um i mean that's 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 the you know the general you know thing with it i guess and then you know i don't know where 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 do you want to dive deeper maybe i mean that, that's dude no i'm just thinking about it. I, like they just they want to feel comfortable so if it's uh if you think of a service company that's in your city or something and everybody knows who they are because you see their stuff all the time and obviously it probably takes 20 years uh unless you invest a lot of money up front in marketing and, and think about this stuff to get to that point where oh that's like over here we have like mr rooter plumbing everybody knows who they are yeah call mr rooter and then you don't even think about anything because it's mr rooter right 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 that's interesting and you know i think uh, here's another thing that I think people can get in uh, intimidated by is they think, well, I can never beat the, you know, the Mr. Rooter big guy or you're, you know, in the carpet cleaning world, the Stanley steamers and these types of things. Um, that's because these companies have been branded, have branded themselves on such a wide scale that, yeah, if you're starting up and you have one or two guys, you're probably not going to be able to beat their like 
thousand person workforce made up of multi owner owner operators across the world. It's just not going to happen. Right. So um, but you can beat them on a very small level. And so that's what, you know, part of uh, branding uh, that I when I talk to people, I, I tell them they need to figure out uh, three things. You put a pin in it, uh, figure out your promise, uh, your unique promise, figure out your identity and figure out your niche. And part of branding for me is the niche. It's who am I talking to? Because if branding is our perceived value to another person, then the other person is part of that equation, meaning I need to know who I'm talking to. And if you are having problems and feel like you're diluted, your your company image is diluted in the marketplace, typically that means you need to go smaller. You need to niche more. That could be geographically, it could be demographically. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can niche, but you can beat big companies when you take it to your own turf, right? Um, so instead of going with a 50 mile radius or statewide or whatever the case is, like going down to a five mile radius, most people don't realize how much revenue there is in a five mile radius. It's because no one's branded themselves enough in that area for people to say, I know, like, like, like you said, when this service comes up, who do you know? Hey, I know these guys. They, I see them all over town. They seem like they're a legit company. Um, you know, if people see you enough and you look the part, to them, you are it, right? If you see somebody enough, you go into the coffee store every single day and you see somebody over and over and over again, they're in front of you every day in line, and you kind of once in a while, you know, hey, how's it going, whatever. Look, you start to actually trust that person. You, you say, hey, can you watch my laptop while I run to the bathroom? You didn't realize that this guy's a kleptomania or you know, a serial killer or something like that because you built trust by just saying hi every day by repetition of seeing that person. And you just assume that he must be a good person because you've seen him enough, right? Um, now, hopefully that's not the case with that guy, that he's like actually a really bad guy or with your company. But the idea is that, and you know, th people wonder how can like companies like, you know, how can some companies operate and treat people so horribly for so long? And it's because people see them so often, they feel like, well, we must be able to trust these people. They didn't realize that they're dealing with thieves, liars, you know, all this stuff, right? And they hire companies not realizing that that's- you know, Like the Watergate scandal? Yeah. The or Enron? They're gonna get. The only difference is you just want you want to have that perception, but then on the back end you want to you want to actually deliver on your promises that people assume are there. That's the difference between the good branding. Yeah, I'm looking at your website, dude. Let's put them on blast. I like your color <laughs> scheme. It's like purple and green. You got good copy. Yeah, uh -huh. I actually um, I got to redo my front page, but some of our landing pages are really coming along well, so. And then, um, wait a second, print products. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to portfolio. <laughs> okay, okay. Truck wraps. Yeah, we, on our website, you can see, basically, we try to make it super easy for people to, number one, see if we're able to handle their the, the type of project that they have coming up. Number two, all the pricing is there, so we make it super transparent. Um super easy to figure out if, if we're a good fit for your next project so that's dope thanks what's a couple of the guys that you do work for in the industry that people might know um we do uh a lot of stuff for oh um we do everything david carroll we do a lot of stuff for uamcc um for, for like their trade shows we do all you know the signage and even little stuff like every time that like somebody needs a certification badge, we're doing that. Um, we've done a couple big people, big names in the roofing hey. world. Uh, like, you did uh, Carol Media Corp. I did his logo. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, DJ Carol. We've done work for um, a couple big people in the roofing and the uh, also the pest control world. We've done stuff for. Um, Honestly, if you, if you're in this industry, um, you know a lot of the the kind of influence hey. guys we've worked with. Um, you know uh, Brandon Vaughn. We do we do a lot of stuff for him right oh, now. Oh hell yeah, Brandon Vaughn. Um, yeah, so there's a there's you a, doing stuff for him? Cool. Yeah, we. I mean, we uh, we 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 definitely work with a lot of the influence. We have over 
think right now we have almost it it seems like we're in such a small world but we actually have almost 2000 customers right now total throughout just like these little in, these service industries seem so small sometimes but they're really like i said when you go deep in a niche like we've done with you know with service contractors as our niche um it goes really deep uh and i think people don't realize because when you build that brand you have you know we have people that come to us that i've never seen online never heard of um but they get referred to us at you know a trade show or uh you know a, a some type of training event or from just a friend in the industry you know so finding your niche so that you can tell people hey we work direct, we work specifically for your type of company it allows them to refer you to other people just like them and keep growing in that niche and that's i think what we've done so try to practice what i preach I remember I first met you and I was like, I walked away from you. I was like, uh, cause we, we, I know we met once, right? I, we met briefly at the, uh, at like the that UAMCC in, in Atlanta, I think. Yeah. 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 In Atlanta. Yeah. Yep. You had the booth, uh, right next to where, okay. By down from Dave Carroll. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was like, uh, I walked away. I was like, that guy's cool. Who Who is that guy? Uh, what's his name? Ryan Kettering. And uh, I think it was Dave Carroll. He's like, you don't know who Ryan Kettering is? What <laughs> fucking planet are you on, bro? So he's like, he's the dude who does all this shit. <laughs> so anyways, I like how you, these cool ass banners and all this stuff. I'm about to put in an order with you. So yeah, man, that's doubt. So tell me, uh, wrap up. Let's wrap up. Tell me a little bit about marketing, branding, and the, and action steps that people need to do so they can go away from this live video and actually go out and do the stuff versus I take think, it out of theory, theory. You know what I mean? Right. So I think the first thing is, and this could go even with people who've already worked on their branding. Uh, have you ever have you ever met somebody like or seen somebody in passing that just like looks like a hot mess, but you can tell that they think that they look really really good. So sometimes that's unfortunately us. We feel like we probably look really, really good, but we're walking around like a hot mess, right? And we're not giving off the, the right uh, information to people to process, whether it be through the eyes, their ears, uh, on your website, all these different touch, but it's just we're not doing it as we would, as we would prefer people to perceive us at. So I think basically looking at Here's what I would do. I would write down a list of all your customer touch points currently. So that that might be, where's your first touch? Is it on Facebook? Is it on a newspaper app? Well, 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 post I'll, I'll watch this back and I'll write it down. Yeah. I'm is serious. It, I was about to start writing this shit down. Are pe well, like, how are people, so the first way is probably, how are people either calling you or getting to your website? And so that that's probably your first touch point. Is it a referral? Is it whatever? Um, so then, where do they go next? So are they calling you? So that's another touch point. Are they going to your website? That's another touch point. Each page on your page on your website is a touch point. What do you do after that call? Are you are you emailing them? Are you um, following up through with a text message? Are you are you uh, whatever? So go through and list out all your touch points that you have with customers currently, and then I would look at those and I would say. How can we better convey to customers moving along, moving them along in the process and delivering on each of those points? So telling people, here's, you know, basically from your first touch point, are they getting an idea of the experience that they're going to get with you? Right. So that's it's coming back to like. We want to build an we want to build a promise of an environment for a customer that's going to take place, and then we want to start delivering on those. So basically, looking at your touch points and trying to evaluate each one and saying, "Am I giving them an idea of what's coming next accurately? And if not, how can I infuse more of myself, our company, into that?" Here's a for instance. So you can map this all out, and you could say, "Well, you know, we really want people to know." how much detail we go into on these cleanings. But right now, after you're sort of analyzing yourself and saying, 
you know, I am that person that's maybe I thought I was conveying that, but I'm looking like a hot mess. I'm not conveying the right information to people. You could look at it and say, all right, well, how do we tell, how do we show people, tell people, make them start to get an idea of what they're really, truly going to get with a cleaning with us? So you, now you say, okay, well, after they call, that email that we send with a confirmation, we're going to send them a video that shows them. It's just a quick five minute video. It's going to show them the level of detail that we go into on an actual job that creates social proof that creates a unique touch point that nobody else is doing that creates a promise for what you're going to do for that customer when they, when you go out to their home and think about it, if they were price shopping and you say, Hey, can I send you this quote through email? Yeah, no problem or whatever. So you send them that quote through email and you attach this video and they check that out. No other company has done this and nobody, no one else is making these promises to them. You see what I'm saying, right? What, if, I, if I went on a date, if you went on a date with somebody, right? And you promised every person like this amazing life and you tried to show them how awesome you're going to treat them. And then another person came along and, you know, they kind of coasted through the dinner or the date or whatever and didn't really show what was going to come next. Who, who are you going to, who are you more likely to want to go on a next date with? You still might not believe that they're going to give you that life that you want but aren't you more curious the person who's promising you this this perfect life that you want you're going to be curious enough to go on date number two right so what we want to do is we want to build that promise for customers and and just assure them through the way that hey not only are we going to do this for you but we've done it for other people and that's where you know i'm huge on trust building elements and third-party validation and you know customer reviews all of those things but that's what I would do is analyze all your touch points and figure out how can we better show who we are and what we can do for our customers, the problems that we can solve. How can we more clearly show this stuff for them to them and then actually start to kind of deliver on that along the way? The greatest thing about coming up with that, we talked about earlier, promise identity niche. The greatest thing with coming up with that consistent promise is I can start to deliver on that with you today, right? I don't have to, if, if my promise is to, uh, to help companies build up their brands uh, and uh, create the perceived value that they want with their clients, I don't have to wait for them to hire me. I can just do this live video and, you know, a thousand people see it and I've just helped them with my promise to help them to, to build up their brands. I've helped them to go to the next step. So then when it's time to hire somebody to, to handle the visual branding, they're probably going to be more inclined with somebody who painted them a picture of the business that they could have and helped them along the way there and actually started delivering on promises. They're not going to go to another company that's never made promises or done them for them, right? <laughs> Stop it. You've like accessed the dopamine driven my brain and you got that fucker on full blast. I stopped. I love this shit, man. It's amazing. <laughs> I told you guys. See, you guys are fucking... I should be charging tickets just for this guy to talk. <laughs> <laughs> perceived Dude, that's perceived amazing. value is, so, is really what it comes down to. That's the difference between, you know, somebody buying a $200 Chromebook and a $2,000 MacBook, right? Um, it's the perceived value. It's about how do I feel when I use this thing? How do I feel about the choices I've made? I think a lot of people say, well, you know, nobody's going to get excited and have, you know, about Mac, about my business, like a Mac or what, you know, Harley, they're not going to get a tattoo of me. You know, yes, these are extreme brands, but understanding that that person made that choice to go with that brand because number one, they felt like they had a promise that they were going to get fulfilled on. Number two, it made them feel comfortable as they moved to the next step because they were buying something that made them feel like they were making the right choice. Like people have, people hate to buy stuff that like sits around. It's the wrong choice. They want to make the right choice when they buy something. So when you show them how your brand is unique from everyone else out there, they're going to be, it's, it's almost like that, that uh, the scarcity thing kicks in where like, the fear of, of missing out on with this company is greater than what, what missing out on, you know, losing maybe a few bucks with these other companies because you're higher. So basically when you get the right customer, they're going to want to pay more for you because 
compared to what their options are, you are the clear choice. And they would be too scared not to get the experience that you're promising for them, as opposed to going with a lower price and pretty much knowing that they're going to get a bad experience. So you're promising them a higher experience. And yes, you might not deliver on that, but the price is a little bit more. It's willing, you're willing to take, they're willing to take that risk. Why? Because it's a managed risk because you've already been delivering on promises with them. You've already gotten agreement with them. You've already gotten that ball rolling with them before they've ever given you any money, right? And then so this other company are pretty much promised, they're, they're not, they just, every, they already know it's gonna be a bad experience, right? So that's kind of, I think the difference is you want to start to think about that and look at what you currently have set up and where can we make a small tweak? You know, where can we infuse more value? Where can we uh, let people know better and how can we start delivering on our promises before our customer uh, pays us? Because once you do that, it's that reciprocity law, right? You're now giving them something along the way. So they're going to want to you know, continue to see what you give them and see what you keep doing for them. So. Dude, I'm going to download this and put this shit on my YouTube channel. There you go. Let's do and it. I get to take all the credit for it. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'll put all your links below, dude. You literally, as you were talking, it was like actually helping dissolve mental blocks for me. <laughs> I swear to God. So, um, uh, never mind these guys watching. I... <laughs> I make videos in the business and I send them to customers like the process of how we'll clean their windows and, and uh, before and after pictures and, and do a video montage of what their landscaping is going to look like. It really helps close jobs, but to send them an email uh, or automated an e email sequence with an attached video to a landing page yeah. to specifically on your website with the video of you dressed nice shirt buttoned up and showing the process of how you clean the carpets or the windows or whatever and making that promise to them there's something off the, else that went off in my head not only are you creating a massive amount of perceived value for them showing them you know the process they're going to get uh in branding yourself you're also creating a a um, 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 um you, now you got to put your money where your mouth is and you have to actually show up and do that so it makes your level of uh uh what's it called accountability your level of account right. accountability goes up you're like oh i made a big promise now i have to show up and make sure my guys don't show up you know with their pants hanging off their ass <laughs> cigarettes and right you know but uh that would drive me crazy by the way that wouldn't happen like that but uh yeah accountability man thank and you you're, you're also i think a customer could be skeptical about all the things you show them but then that starts that pretty much gets in their mind gets squashed because when you par uh, combine that with third party validation from other customer reviews and some of them, they even maybe know those people, you're, you're basically saying, I'm telling you, this is what we do. This is how we do it. This is how we look when we show up. This is, this is how it's going to go for you. And then look at all these customers that have had the same exact experience that you're going to have. And they're all thrilled about it. So, um, you know, being able to show, that we've brought people through like so you have this issue and we're going to help you solve it look yes people aren't you know scared about like about you know having a, a bad you know lawn care job people aren't scared that you're going to cut the grass wrong they're scared about having the wrong type of technicians at their home people that aren't going to treat them the way they want hidden charges like all this stuff right they're scared about having a bad experience and they want to make the best decision that they can. And if you can show them that and then you have that validation, it's no brainer. And here's the other thing is that when you're talking about your website, that brings up a good point because you're taking the time and the money to build out that stuff. And when you go on somebody's site that looks like it was built in 1992, you call the phone and it's, there's actually, you get the, this caller is not available for your call. It's like, you don't even have an answering machine set up. They go, they, they see on your, uh, you know, they see you around town or pull up to a job with like a beat up truck. Look, if you don't have the money to invest a couple grand into a website, a couple grand into a, a nice truck, a nice wrap, a couple grand in, into, uh, or just even investing the time into building these things out. If you don't have the time, the money to invest in this stuff, why should your customer invest in your business, their money, their hard earned money? 
Yeah, so you're not you're not say you're not being critical. You're just pointing. That's just a matter of fact, right? Right. I mean, if if it's if your business isn't like every person knows that any any consumer anybody knows you should at least have a nice looking website. It doesn't have to be the best converting. It doesn't have to have the best copy. It doesn't have, look. They know that it, it it's like a, a thing that all businesses have a, a decent website. If you haven't put even 500 bucks into putting together a decent website for somebody or, or, or if you don't have 500 bucks, the time to learn how to just, you know, figure out how to use one and make one with Wix or something, whatever. If you haven't taken the time to do these things or even have a, a voicemail box on your, on your, on your phone or answer the phone, if you don't have the time and the money to make these happen for your customer, why in the world would they spend money with you? Well, you can actually look at the reciprocal of what you're saying. I always had this idea. I was like, well, I'm just going to hire a bunch of subcontractors. And I'm going to – so I, a couple of weeks ago, I went down the list on, like, Google and from Google to Craigslist everywhere, calling local people in my area who do do what I do to try to talk to them and get them, you know, kind of a strategic partnership. For And so, like, half of them didn't pick up the phone. And then a lot of the other ones were like, oh, hello? <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, did I call uh, Joe's landscaping? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, this Joe. <laughs> and I was like, and then I like, right. you know what I'm saying? It tells you that you're either, basically, we can, a, a customer is going to make assumptions about that person. Now, you could be the busiest guy ever, and you just never set up, your, uh, never hired oh, I, somebody. I'm sorry, what I meant, phones. with just a little bit of work and everything you're talking about, just all, automatically puts you like, Leaps, Leaps and bounds, and bounds yeah. above most people. Right. So, absolutely, yeah. Because you could be the you could be on the the busiest guy and just don't have time to answer your phone. But that's not what customers think. They think if this person can't invest in somebody to uh, to man their office, then they're probably that they're, they're assuming that you're probably on another job. Like you work part time. Like you ever get a call like where it's like. Do you still, hey, do you still do landscaping? Do you still, you guys still do this? It's because most companies in these industries, they're gone in, in a year, you know, or less. You know, so why, you know, yeah, they found your thing, but they're just going to assume you're either out of business uh, or that you're on your, your real job or that you don't have enough money to hire somebody to answer the phone for you or that you don't have enough money to even have a, a calling service to pick up the phone when you can't, even though it's not an actual employee, you haven't taken the time, the money to invest in making sure that their number one promise is met is that when I call you, you should answer. Like that's what people think, right? I mean, especially today in this world, when somebody emails you, they expect a response in a timely manner. When somebody calls you, when somebody, whatever, right? And um, so when you're not even getting the basics down, how can you ever want to charge what you think you're really worth? Or for your or for your company to be able to charge what it needs to to get to the next level, right? So you have to get that stuff all right, and then that way the perception of your company goes up. And as uh, Grant Cardone says, a sale is made when value outweighs price. Doesn't matter what the price is. I need if I raise the value, I can keep raising the price as long as the value is exceeding that, right? Um, so raising the perceived value uh, through building value in many different ways can help you to boom just bump everything up I'm, I'm, I'm good man I'm just... it's awesome ryan kettering founder of prolific prints graphic so josh design trees was comment uh, What's up, josh? Mark I don't know on. we did the uh, josh did who the josh trees uh the uh, oh, yeah, yeah. christmas lights yeah, uh, so we did the logo for his uh, Clip uh, Association uh, and yeah. helping them with a uh, couple pieces they're making for that. That's a that seems like a pretty good gig for some of these guys. Those lighting stuff. Uh, Sweet man. Well, thank you so much for the powerful lesson. I'm going to have to put this mug on YouTube. Well, I appreciate you having me. And, uh, 
yeah, if anybody has any questions, there's a live chat on our website. There's a phone number on our website. There's all that stuff. So reach out if you have any questions. We'll try to give you tips where we can or if we have something that we could be a good fit for you to help you get to the next level of this stuff. All right, man. Peace out later. Hey, hey guys. Thanks for joining. All right. Thanks, guys.